on a different, uh, different kind of lesson. So I'm going to try to go slow. Even if we have to do it in two parts, we will, but I'd rather do it in one. But Brother Wolf's been preaching a lot about repentance. And so everybody comes from different walks of life, and everybody's walked through different things than the next person sitting next to you. So today I thought I would grab something out of the Word of God and see how they had a different kind of revival. If we say revival, what do you think of? Oh, we're having a revival. What comes to your mind, Landon? Right. Being reborn in a way. Like being reborn, okay. That's yeah, restrengthen. Yes, because if I if I revive something, what's wrong with it? It's become dead or partly dead. It's either dying or it's dead. So I need to revive it. Either it's never had the life, or it's had life and it's going away, and it needs to get the life again. So I thought, let me look in the Bible and see what passage of Scripture, how they had a different kind of revival. Because revival doesn't come to me and Sister Priscilla the same way. It doesn't come to Brother Jim. It may not come the same way to Brother Bailey as it does to Brother Jim. Maybe God gives revival to each person in a different way. Why would he do that? Because we all have different needs. I'm not the same as Leah, and Leah's not the same as me. We're different people, and we have different needs. So, I wrote down a thought for the day. When we come to the house of God over and over, yet we leave, and it feels like our life doesn't really seriously change, why doesn't it? We're coming to the house of Almighty God where it's stronger, His presence is stronger than if you would be by yourself. So why are, we go, why are we leaving the house of God and there's no big changes? I'll tell you why. Langston, did you know that you're in a war? Right now, while you're sitting here, and before you ever got here, there's a war going on, and it's going on for your soul. It's going on against you for eternity, and guess what? You have two masters pulling at you right now while you're sitting there fighting you not to even hear this lesson. You have God over here saying, Langston, I have joy and success for you, and I can help you figure out the things in school and the things in dating and the things in college that's coming to you. But you have the devil saying, ha, that God of yours is so boring. Let me tell you, I can give you some fun. But let me tell you something. The Bible says sin has joy or fun only for a season. It's only for a season. It's true. You can go out there and have some sort of fun, but after that happens, the enemy turns it all to destruction. So it's only for a season. So we're coming to church, and when you woke up this morning, Brother Bailey, guess what? The war was on. The devil said, oh, I'm going to do everything. So him and none of his family get to that church. I don't care what it's going to take. And you know what? Sometimes it's the little tiny thing that breaks it and you say, I ain't going to church. <laughs> it's the little tiny thing that's not really a big thing, but it's just piled up on the other stack of stuff. So we're in a war and there's two opposing forces that's out for our soul. The wicked one is making a bid for you. And he's going to God asking him, can I fight them with this? Because they won't live for you if I do. Well, guess what? The devil's not going to stop until you're destroyed. He's not going to stop until he's got you. But you know what? We can't get frustrated or tired of it all and say, well, I'm just not going to do nothing. You're in serious trouble when you're sitting in neutral. And guess what? We're all human. I'm raising my hand. We are all human. We want to just stick ourselves in neutral and not do nothing one way or the other and leave all the religious, quote, Christian stuff alone. Because there's a war. But guess what? When you sit in neutral and you don't do nothing, that war is still going on. Because the enemy won't stop till he gets you not to turn to God or come to church or get spiritual, quote, or be a Christian, quote. He's not going to stop till he actually destroys you. But all we see right now is he's, he's fighting for us. He wants to stop us. He don't want us to see the end. But even though this war is going on, God told us in his word in John 3.16. Who knows John 3.16? Brother 
Brother Bailey? Is it the one Brother Samuel's always? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish. We all know about Jesus, but guess what? Some of us are still going to bust hell wide open. Why? Because we're tired of the war. And we don't understand what's at the end of it that God has for us before we ever get there. But today I'm coming with an with a instance, a situation in the Bible, an experience. And I want to use this in the Bible to show you. You can come to church and have religion, or you can come to church and have salvation. There's a lot of people that have religion, and, we, and they sometimes are the most awesome people. But it ain't going to work for eternity because they don't have salvation. So God wants us to look at ourselves today and find out, do I have religion or do I have salvation? So Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11 to 13, if you want to write this down whenever you're by yourself to read this too, and you can think about this. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11 to 13, open your Bibles. I could be lying to you, <laughs> but I won't. But I could be. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, it's a little bitty uh, book. Look at the front and they'll tell you what page to go to. Look at the index, they'll tell you where Ecclesiastes is. We have an index for the books. There you go. Let's see. So what was it? Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Okay, Ecclesiastes on page 467. Page 467. Be seven in your white Bibles and go to chapter 8. Turn all the way to chapter 8. Just for you, I want you to know that it's there. I didn't just make this up out of my thoughts. executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is freely setting them to do evil though a sinner does evil hundred times and his days be prolonged yet surely I know it shall be well with them that fear God which fear before him but it shall not be well with the wicked neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow because he fears not God so the wicked seem to be okay and their, and their evil seem to be okay in their evilness and their wickedness because the shadow, the sun's shadow lasts a long time. But you know what? The shadow is not there forever. So you're better off to be the person that fears God. But I want to bring out verse 11 to you today. You know what? We live in a time of grace. I've done things that in the Old Testament God would have struck me dead. I actually lived in fornication and adultery. Guess what? If I wouldn't be in the dispensation of grace and Jesus hadn't died on the cross, they would have took me to the front of the city, to the gate of the city, and they would have stoned me till I died. I had a friend who ended up in witchcraft, became a witch. Guess what? She did this today, but if she would have done that whenever, before Jesus died on the cross, they would have took her to the gate of the city and they would have stoned her to death. Well, let me get more specific. God is a jealous God. He wants all of us. He don't want to share us with the devil or any vice at all, any kind of vice. If you were a child, Landon, and you were disobedient to either of your parents, you know, and they couldn't do anything with you, guess what they would have done with you? The same thing. Could you imagine living like that? 
it seems like God is harsh, but you know what? God would come and His presence would come. And He would show His glory and He would do all these miracles. And He parted the sea and, and you know, He saved Daniel and He shut the mouths of the lions for Daniel. And, and he, he made it rain when there was no rain. So God came and showed Himself in all these ways. And, and His presence would be felt when Moses would read the law. So God was very strict. You know why? Because He made you and you're His. And there's a part of you in, that's for Him no matter what you do with it. So God wants us. And He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share you. So today we have a mindset that, well, I did this. I'll just ask God to forgive me later. Because it is true. We are in grace and God will forgive us. But we need to be careful that just because he won't, he won't execute death or he won't execute instant, what would you call it? Instant uh, karma? Instant, no, like, like I said yesterday and I thought something ugly in my spirit against my neighbor. But because God didn't come and punish me right then and there, then maybe I just went on and didn't even care about it. And acted all like, oh, I don't care about them. They love God anyway. And acted all self-righteous, you know. So because God didn't do anything, maybe I kept on with my spirit or attitude. So we have to be careful because we do live in a time of grace. We have to realize it does give us a freedom to just keep sinning. Because the Bible does say a man's going to reap what he sows. So, so where does that leave us? I'm, I'm bringing all that to us today to say where does that leave us then? If we're living in grace and God's not going to execute our, our punishment speedily, then where are we? Then we need to find salvation. But make sure it's not religion. We don't want, just want religion. Anybody can have religion. We want salvation. So let's go to Acts verse 8. Acts verse 8, verse 5 to 8. So Acts verse 8 in the New Testament. What chapter? Acts 8, verse 5 to 8. What page is it, Landon? 768. 768. <clears throat> So a lot of times do y'all hear Brother Wolf say, oh, we're going to have a revival service. But some people wonder, what really is revival? This was a, a revival that showed all the different, to me it showed the glory of God, and it showed the love of God, and it showed the power of God. So that's why I chose this story. And it was different because people came to God with different needs. I can't expect Brother Jim to go and and uh, pray to God the way I pray to God. Because he's not me. And you can't expect Sister Priscilla to go pray the prayer that I'm praying because she doesn't need what I need. Maybe I don't need what she needs. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so God addressed these people with all these different issues that were all different. So let's go to verse... Uh, four. I'm going to read verse 4 to 8. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Philip was an evangelist. And the people with one accord gave heed to the things that Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them. Whoa, that's serious. And many that were possessed, that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Okay? So, so far, we're going to read some more. So far, Philip the evangelist went down to Samaria. This wasn't even the people that God chose to come save, but God was going to give salvation to everyone now. And it said that people had different problems. 
When they started believing Christ, when he preached Christ, people were possessed with demons, and those demons ran out of them screaming. Some people had palsies. That means they had paralysis. Some people were lame. That means they might have been able to walk, but they had trouble walking or some kind of illness. Made it hard to walk. And then verse 8 said, There was great joy in that city. So I want you to realize something. All different people from all different walks of life have come here. Do you think everybody's possessed with demons? Just say what you think. Do you I think, think so? He thinks so. Do you think everybody's possessed with demons? There has to be a little bit of She thinks so. Do you think everybody's possessed with demons? Never thought about it, Langston? What do you mean by possessed? Uh, like they've totally taken over them. Like at times their voice, their actions, their their thinking, their mind. I think that you're talking about the exorcists or you're about something different than Langston. Just evil thoughts. You'd be she hearing. means evil. Yeah, we can have I evil do thoughts. That all the time. We can have evil thoughts but not have a demon. Just like somebody else is in my head. Okay. So this is what the lesson of today is about. How do we get salvation and not just get off with religion? The first thing we need to realize is not everybody has demons. You have walked a place in life that I may not have walked. But I walked some things and done some things and I took part in some things in life that you may never touch. Okay? But some people have walked places and touched things and took part in things in their spirit and in their body that caused demons to come in. But the next person just don't have God and never took part in none of those things. Okay, are they both sinners? Yes. Yes. You have sinner number one. Sinner number one. He just doesn't have God. He doesn't have God. But it, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So maybe he just thought things and got a little upset, but got over it with people. Had a, had a spin for spaff with the parents, but made it right. You know, but didn't live and brood in all the discord and the, you know. So he's just a sinner and he needs God. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? But here's Mr. Bill over here. Mr. Bill, center number two. Mr. Bill, oh, he took his cousin's wife. And he took part in the seance and the Ouija board. And, and he really loves to do heroin. Okay? Are they both sinners? Yes. yes. Neither one has found the baptism of the Holy Ghost or been baptized in Jesus' name. So do they both need God? Yes. But they're two different people. They walk two different ways in life. So we just read right here that they have a lot of Mr. Bills in, uh, in the revival. We'll just call them Mr. Bill. They had a lot that had demons and, and got delivered. But, and they had a lot that were sick. Okay? Now, I want to ask you something. When we read this, did it say they were baptized or had the Holy Ghost from what we just read? Did it say that? What, what I just read to you, Brother Jeremy, I said that the de they were delivered of demons. But when I read that, did it say they had the Holy Ghost? Yes. No. No. It said he preached Christ, and when they heard and believed, the demons were, were run out of them. And their sicknesses were healed from hearing the word of God. So that's something that we all need to realize. These people received the word of God. They believed it. They actually got spiritual deliverance from demons. Maybe it was hate. Maybe it was anger. Brother, I had a question. Uh, I had a question. Um, so... <laughs> preaching, is it possible that they didn't like, maybe not receive it, but do you think maybe they all, like, the demons came out and whatnot because they, like, felt, they felt him on them? Because God is his word. Like, they felt him. Whenever he preached the word and was sent out, he was sending out God because God is his word. 
I'm going to give you a demonstration to show you what happened, too. I'm going to give you what can happen. God is His Word, and the Word became flesh, Jesus Christ. So, the Word is God Himself. So, when they preached the Word, that was power to drive them out. Okay? That's power that came and drove them out. It didn't say nothing else. It didn't say God stayed. It didn't say they got the hook. At this point in time, the Word of God, which is God, just came to them, and the power of that Word drove those demons out of the people. And I'm going to give you an example. So let's go to verse 14. So when the apostles, this is very important, Langston, for all of us to understand this. Verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when Peter and John came down, prayed for them that they what? Verse 15. The apostle Peter and John came to help the revival. Why did they come in verse 15? They prayed for them that they what? Might receive the Holy Ghost. Whoa, say that again, Langston. Say it loud. Uh, Landon, say it loud. He was like praying for them that they might to, to like receive the Holy Ghost. Whoa, does that blow your mind? They were demon possessed and got delivered. But you know what? They did not have the Holy Ghost yet. So this is important for us to understand. God came to them. The Word of God was believed by them, and it drove demons out of them. The Word of God was believed by them, and uh, they were healed of their sicknesses. But you know what? They weren't full of the Holy Ghost yet. They weren't even full of the Holy Ghost. So we need to realize that getting free and deliverance is an experience that only the Word of God and the power of God can give you. Amen. But when the Word of God and the power of God comes, it doesn't mean that it came and it stayed inside you and filled you with it. But it came to you like Landon was saying, it came to you and it came on you and it caused what was wrong to leave. Okay? <clears throat> so we need to realize that sometimes we come to God and we struggle and we just can't get in it. We just can't get in it and we can't make up our mind and we don't know if we should get more involved or not. It's because we have powers of darkness fighting against us. Whether it's that we're just a sinner or whether it's that we took part in something and there might be visitors. You might have visitors in your spirit. Look at the visitors I put. That's anger, alcohol, different stuff. Witchcraft. So, when we receive the Word of God, we come from two di we come from different walks of life. So the wor Word of God might come to us and we just feel Him like, like Landon said. Or the Word of God can come to us and drive demons out because we actually have visitors in our spirit. In our own personality, we could have visitors. So, Peter, all the apostles in Jerusalem said, it sounds like they're having a powerful revival. People are getting delivered from demonic spirits. They're getting healed and getting miracles. So we're going to send Peter and John to help Philip, the evangelist. This is a lot of work. Verse 15 said, these people hadn't even received the Holy Ghost yet. So receiving the Holy Ghost is a total different experience. Now, God is the Holy Ghost. He had to send the Holy Ghost to drive that out. He just didn't come and stay inside him. Receiving it and being full is different. Guess why? You know why God didn't come stay inside? Because they had visitors. He came long enough to kick the visitors out. He came in his power to kick, kick the visitors out, and now you're free, and you're empty, and now he wants to know, now that you're empty, do you want me? Do you want me? Do you want salvation? I set you free. Do you want to be saved? Do you want me to come stay inside you now? Because now I can come in and stay because none of this is going to push me out anymore. Okay. So, verse 16 is talking about the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Wow. Verse 17, they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Okay, let's read it all. And then there was a, a witch doctor, verse 18. He saw if you laid on the hands, you could give Holy Ghost. He wanted to give them money. 
He said, I'm going to give you money, so if I lay hands on people, they'll get the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, Peter said, your money's going to perish because you're not right. You can't buy the gift to God. He wanted to buy the power to lay hands on people, and they'll receive the Holy Ghost. And the apostle told the witch doctor, you can't buy that. That's a gift from God. Okay, so that's all I want to say about that. Okay, so what came first? Were they delivered first, or did they have the Holy Ghost first? Delivered first. Okay. What happened after they were delivered? Did they get the Holy Ghost or did they get baptized? They got the Holy Ghost. No. They got it. Which one? Let's see. Read question? it, sister. Read it. Read it. Verse for, 16. For, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, that's a good scripture then. So they received deliverance and they had heard the word and they were baptized in Jesus' name. So it said they had been baptized in Jesus' name. So because of their obedience, God came and gave them demonic deliverance. Gave them deliverance from the demons. Okay. So it said the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen none of them yet. So verse 17 said the apostles laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So do you see that there's different things in your spiritual life that God wants to do for you? You may not have a visitor. You may not have bitterness. I had bitterness and unforgiveness. I had fornication and I had alcohol. So when I came to God and started, I got baptized first. And I came to God and I would get down to pray and God would start showing me all these things. And whenever the spirit of lust left me, that's why I didn't want them to be in here. When the spirit of lust left me, I felt it leave. I felt it leave. Now, did I know it was that strong in me? I, well, I knew it was bad in the center, but I didn't know it was that bad. It had that big a hold on me until I literally felt it break and leave. My biggest addiction, I had started leaving alcohol alone, but it was cigarettes. Whenever God made that leave, he let me feel a physical thing inside of my spirit. And physically, I felt a breaking. And I felt when that spirit of nicotine left. But God showed me the nicotine came. And what, was, what brought the nicotine was a spirit of rebellion. So what it was is God broke a spirit of rebellion off of me in that way. So, this went on that after a while, I was able to receive the Holy Ghost. And when I received the Holy Ghost, I was totally empty because God had pushed all those visitors out of me. So, He had full control over everything in me. There was nothing else taking the place. So, it was all God. So, when the Holy Ghost came, it just flowed like a river and it was nonstop, nonstop. So, if we come and we ask God to forgive us and we have trouble praying and we see He's fine. And we have trouble praying, and we seem like we can't get a flow of the Holy Ghost. What we see with other people, maybe there's a vice. Maybe you have a visitor. Maybe it's hurt, hatred, bitterness, alcohol, drugs. Uh, uh, maybe it's unforgiveness. Let me tell you, the hardest thing for me, I just spoke the word, God. I forgive them for what they did to me. I feel the Lord. But when I said, God, I forgive them for what they did to me. And God took it. I thought, of, I thought the whole world changed. I'm sorry. I thought the whole world had changed. And you know what? Nobody around me changed. And you can stand there, Mia, and you can tell me something. And before I would have took it this way, it might have been hurt or didn't understand you. But you could, after that, you could sit there and tell me something that I could take it the way that you told me. I lived a very rough childhood in a very rough atmosphere. And whenever I came out of there, you just get that chip off of my shoulder. Because, buddy, I'm going to fight for myself. Because I was taken advantage of and I could not fight for myself before. But whenever God took that away, I came and explained what it felt like. I felt like that I didn't even have life. I didn't know what it was walking around without life, but I literally felt like I had life. I can't explain it. Like I had life in me, like, uh, well, 
I, I, I can't explain it. You can't explain what God does. So these things were stopping me. It's not because I was a bad person and they were a good person. They were better than me so they could have God. And I could, it wasn't that. It's that my hurt was so deep and my rejection was so deep that I literally took these things on to make to fill up the emptiness in me. I was trying to fill up the emptiness in me. So I want to show you something. People say this. People say this. I remember saying, God, I can't stop this. But if I need to stop this, then I want you to help me stop it. And I hate them. But if you take this from me, God, then I believe I can love them. But I don't know how you're going to take this from me, God. Because it's been years, years, and years. Okay? But God doesn't even need my explanation. But I was being honest. I just was naked in front of God. I feel like I was naked in front of God. So when God did it, I'm like, where? Why have I been like this all my life? Why didn't anybody tell me this? And I walked around feeling so free. I wish I could just go give it to everybody. Because my family, my friends, the people around me had been so hurt. They were so bound. They were... They stayed in the drugs. I got out to an extent. I got out. I would just take other stuff, pills and stuff. But it's like, I wish I could just go give it to them. But they had to get to that place where I got and be honest and say, this is how I feel. And it's, you know what they did. And it's going to take you, God. But I, but people have a different opinions. So I want to show some. Some people say, well, how can you have the Holy Ghost? Wasn't that the Holy Ghost moving on me? I know that was God moving on me. Brother Jeremy, don't you tell me that wasn't God moving on me. Just because I got problem with cigarettes, don't tell me that wasn't God moving on me. I know that was the power of God. So I'm going to show you how this can happen. I'm going to show you what state your spirit can be in. Okay. So we have sinner number one who doesn't know God, doesn't know there is salvation, doesn't know what Jesus can do for you. I probably need a bowl, Brother Jim, out of there. Okay. This is sinner number one. He doesn't know there's a Holy Ghost. He doesn't know you can feel the power of God. He's just a pretty good person. He hasn't done a witchcraft. He didn't go to drugs. He'll go to church sometimes. He respects and believes there's a God. But he's not baptized in Jesus' name. He don't know this power can come inside you. But he's still a sinner. Just because he doesn't know doesn't make him a sinner. He's still a sinner. So, hold on. This will help you understand what people are trying to say. Okay, can you see Landon? Langston? Okay. So, I'm going to need more water probably. So, sinner number one finds out, wait a minute. I can be baptized and God will forgive me of all the wrong thoughts, all the things I've done wrong, all the places I went I shouldn't have been, all the times I got angry with my parents. Oh, I can have the Holy Ghost and feel a power and be saved. So they come to church or they're in their room at home and they think, I want this Holy Ghost, God. If I got to get to, if I need this to get to heaven, I want this Holy Ghost. So you know what God does to sinner number one? Sinner number one, he comes and he gives them the Holy Ghost. Okay. He's giving them the Holy Ghost. He's giving them the Holy Ghost till it's coming in and it's going out. Okay. It's going to stick to the glass. So I'm just kind of glass I have. Is he clean now? Yes. Because, he's, because God came in, pushed all the sin out, and there's nothing left but the Spirit of God in here. There's no room for nothing else. It's the kind of glass I have to do that. Okay. I need a bunch of water. Who wants to give me some water? Okay. 
So here's center number two. Remember, center number two has visitors. What could he have? What's some of the visitors he could have? Witchcraft. Witchcraft? I need to throw this. Lust. Lust. Anger. Lust, anger is some of the major things that Unforgiveness. Hurt. Unforgiveness. Yes. Bitterness. Okay, wait. He's different than than center number one. Remember, this is center number two. So he has visitors in his spirit. He has hurt. He has lust. And he has witchcraft. A witchcraft. Okay. Let's say just all out rebellion. I'm going to hurt you before you hurt me. And ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Just all out rebellion. You don't know what I've been through? Okay. I cannot teach like this. Okay. So is he full of sin? Yes. Does he have demonic things in there? Yes. So what happens is he finds out I can be baptized in Jesus' name and all this trash weighing on my mind, I will be free and I won't feel guilty of nothing. So he comes to church and he finds out I can give the Holy Ghost. Whoa, I can have some power. Man, I'll tell you what, I know some powerful things in my life, but it's anger, lust, witchcraft. So he comes and he comes and he prays for the Holy Ghost. Guess what? He's praying. The Holy Ghost is coming. The Holy Ghost is coming. Guess what? Some of the sin's coming out, huh? Some of the sin's coming out. Okay? And he prays as long as sinner number one did. But what's the difference in sinner number two and sinner number one? It's deeper. Say it, brother. It's deeper. It's deeper? Darker. Did anything leave? Just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit left. Oh, man. I ain't never felt this much relief. So I go, so sinner number two goes home. Bill goes home. He says, man, I went down to that church over there. I feel so much relief. God, my mind feels better. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Tomorrow he wakes up. He's so angry. He's so angry. He's like, my life wouldn't be like this if it wouldn't be for my parents. If they wouldn't have done all this mess to me and... You know what? I could just kill them. Look at that. I went down to that church. I felt better. Why am I feeling all lousy this morning? Why do I still feel like this? I hate them for what they did to me. So you still have all this, but you just went to church and you know it was the power of God. You know what it is? Because you still got the visitors. You still got the visitors. Look. It's all full of Holy Ghost in here that came, but the visitors riled up in you and it pushed all that move of God you had out. So, where does that leave us? I got these visitors and I've been carrying them for years and you know what? I never realized I even had them. I just thought everybody reacted like that. Now what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with this? Whenever you come and you feel the power of God as strong as it comes in here, and then next week here you are fighting the same things and you feel like you ain't got nothing, it's because you need to do a house cleaning. And you know what? you got to start kicking them out. you got to start kicking them out. If somebody comes to your house, Brother Jeremy, and they're going to hurt one of your kids, are you going to let them come stay in the house? Oh, well, just come spend the night with us. We're going to talk about it. No, you're going to say, get out of here. Well, God wants you to take control of your house. And He wants you to start kicking out the visitors that don't belong. Because God isn't going to force Himself to come in here and take out what's there. When He got to this point with sinner number two, it hit it. It hit it. And that water kept fl falling out and the water wouldn't stay. So he was asking sinner number two, why don't you take this out? I don't want to be in here with this. You need to get this out of your life. You're not going to have me and have this. So he stopped the move of the Spirit for you to realize, I'm in here and I'm trying to come in all the way, but you won't let this out. 
I'm not going to make you. You've got to tell it to get out. So that brings us to repentance. So who wants the visitors to stay? I was, I was begging God. I'm tired of this. This is all I knew all my life. God, there's got to be more to this, and you've got to be bigger than this. I heard about you all my life, God. My mama told me about you, but I know you're bigger than this. That I don't have to walk around like this. But when God came and I started telling him, he already knows it. Guess what? God already knows your visitors that's there. Yes. Did you know that? He already knows our visitors that we let come in. But we didn't realize when we let some of them come in that it might be a lifetime stay until we tell them to get out. They know if you want them there. If I go to your house and visit you, Sister Priscilla, I know if you want me there. <laughs> you might not even have to say, Sister Jenna, I really don't want you here today. But I'm going to know it by the way you act. So I'm probably just going to say, well, I need to go. And I'm going to pick up my stuff and I'm going to go. The Lord does that with his gift. Oh, wait a minute. You want this in here? You really don't want my gift? Okay. Well, he takes that gift and he says, okay, I'm putting the Holy Ghost over here. And not, they don't really want that. So we're at a point right now as a church body, not just as an individual. God's been dealing with me, my own self, about things. He's telling me, Janet, that's got to come out. I don't care how long you live for God. You ain't perfect. There's this misconception that, oh, I have the Holy Ghost, so i got to be perfect or I can't live this. That ain't never going to happen. But God's telling me to get those things out because if I don't, guess what? They're going to become a permanent visitor like these. So we're at a point now where repentance has got to come. God's brought us individually and as a church. So search your heart and ask God. Start getting with God by yourself. And whenever this power is going to come and you're going to tell him you don't want it, you can tell that thing itself, whether it's the lust or it's the unforgiveness, you're going to leave me. It knows if you want it or not. It will leave. Now, if you're wishy-washy and you still want to have those vices and you still want to have God, guess what? It's not going to leave because it knows. Because there are actually demonic forces that take over your personality. It's demonic forces that mesh with your own personality and it's going to lie and say, well, this is just you and you've always been like this. No, I beg your pardon. No, we are to be cleaned and then God will come in. He does not give us those things that bring darkness. Those thoughts, all that does not come from God. He doesn't come with darkness. So we're going to stop our lesson today, Brother Jim. We're going to stop our lesson today and we're going to continue it next time and we're going to go on to repentance. But this is... Uh